let's just sew whatever. Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, and it's actually kind of a throwback to what I used to make. So I used to actually sell bow ties a lot. I don't know. People just kind of stopped buying them, so I stopped making them. But I actually have this pattern for a freestyle bow tie. This is by So Like My Mom. It is a free pattern. Um, so I'm just going to do a video on it. What you need is probably about a fat quarter of exterior fabric. So I am using organic cotton sateen from Spoonflower. Um, it has like a really nice sheen, but it's still thick enough. And then we're going to add interfacing to it. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is cut out four of these from my fabric. I'm going to make sure that they're all facing the same direction. So you don't necessarily want to make one upside down, even though this piece is pretty universal. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out really quick. So I feel like something fun to note is that you could use two different fabrics depending on um, the colors you're using. So let's say I wanted to use like a solid black with this. When the bow tie was tied, you would see peeps of both fabrics. So just something to kind of play around with. I am going to just use this one fabric for both sides though. All right, so I've got all of my pieces cut for total. So now I'm going to interface one side with interfacing. So this says to use a total of four pieces. However, um, this fabric is pretty thick on its own and I would hate for it to get even thicker. So I'm just gonna interface one set. So I have four total of these pieces and I'm just gonna interface one set. So I'm just using uh, the scrap of woven fuse. The tutorial suggests using um, shirt tailor fusible interfacing. I'm not sure, but you guys can check it out. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this and just block fuse it really quick using my heat press. Okay, so what my heat press is set to is 147 degrees Celsius. I have this Teflon sheet here to protect the hot plate from any interfacing, and then this is cleanable. So I'm going to go ahead and press it for just a few seconds. And then I have this um, attached using magnets. Peel that off, and then press the other piece. And you just need a couple of seconds. And then I will go ahead and cut out the extra. And I'm not going to go like super careful with how close I cut this just because when we sew it together, it's, um, it's not really going to matter too much. When you put right sides together, it's not gonna hurt to have just that little bit of extra interfacing showing in your seam allowance. And this method of air facing may seem a little bit wasteful, but it's kind of hard to use up every single little piece. So this is what works for me. It may not work for everybody. Um, 
Um, I'm going to be using my domestic Juki sewing machine to put this together. Um, you could honestly use pretty much any domestic sewing machine. You wouldn't have an issue because the layers aren't too thick. Okay, let's head on over there. Okay, I am starting with right sides together. Matching up the sides and I'm gonna sew with a half inch seam allowance along the short end. Keeping my interface pieces together and my non-interface pieces together. And then I'll use my iron to press these open really quick. Okay, and then I'm gonna lay right sides together and clip. I'm gonna lay it on my disgusting ironing board because my iron is the devil and is leaking everywhere. It's okay, there's plenty of replacement. So I'm just gonna use these hair clips to clip around the entire thing. And while you're sewing it together, you're gonna to wanna to leave an opening that is about two to three inches along this area. And that will be our turn hole. So it may help you to kind of use a washable pencil or something like that to mark out where you need to leave it open. Okay, all clipped together. Okay, and I'm starting this little spot here and I'm going to move down a few inches so that's my turn hole and then use about a quarter inch seam allowance Now my pieces didn't line up perfectly on this side and that's okay because I'm kind of making up for it with my seam allowances and just following the shape as close as I can. And now we can sew all the way down this long short side. I'm just adding little back stitches on the seams that will have a little bit of stress while turning and poking through. And then remember, we need to leave an opening to turn through. So I left quite a wide opening. I probably didn't need to, but we're just gonna sew it up in the end, so it's okay. Um, so now I'm going to use pinking shears to clip my seam allowances. Okay. Especially around that curve so that it sits nice and flat. And for the rest of the seams, you can just use straight scissors. 
but I'm not going to cut where I have not sewn just so it's a little bit easier for us to sew it up. Okay, so now we're ready to turn it. Is it looking good so far, Ben? Yeah? Unsure. Okay. Okay, so it says to kind of separate the layers if you can. And then you can use a little turning tool. I am using this tool here. My friend Ann sent it to me. It is super awesome. You can use either this curved end or the straight end, whatever seems easier to you. Or chopsticks, totally fine too. I definitely used to use like a, just a skewer. I'm just trying to shimmy through. Come on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse this because it could take me a minute. <laughs> okay. okay, finally got it through. <laughs> Took a lot longer than I would like to admit, but I think it's just because it's a lot of fabric trying to go down that small tube. So I want to make sure I push the ends of the bow tie out. So I'm just to slowly taking the blunt end of this tool to poke through and press along that side seam. And then I can iron this using steam um, to help get those wrinkles out and help it hold its shape. Okay, so now that it's nicely pressed, I went ahead and tucked in the end that we turned through, and then we're going to top stitch that, and then it's pretty much done, other than trying to repress it to look a little bit nicer. Um, I have absolutely no idea how to tie these. I did at one point, but after a while you, you know, you forget those kinds of things. So let's sew it up and be finished. That's it. Now this bow tie can go off to its new home. <laughs>